Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Today we've got our next episode of our ever popular buy, avoid or wait for a sale series and some more pretty much brand new games to the Nintendo Switch to help you decide if it's worth picking them up now or maybe waiting or avoiding them for good. With that in mind, let's get into the list. First up then we've got the lovely looking House of Golf, which is essentially mini golf within the house. It has a real Toy Story style aesthetic to it and of the 135 levels, many of them are hugely complex and enjoyable. You can play with up to six players locally as well and you'll unlock a variety of strange and unique golf balls. Now there aren't many golf games on the Nintendo Switch and this one caught my eye when I saw it on our upcoming list. And I can tell you, it controls really nicely. Performance is solid in docked and handheld, and if you've got a few mates or just fancy a small little game for yourself, you could do far worse than this. It's reasonably priced at around about £8 or $10, which for me is right on the money. It offers good value and a fun experience albeit a very simple one. If you're after a challenging experience, while the levels start out very simply, they do get much more complex as you progress, and they also get pretty awesome as you venture further into the house. I'd say for this price, if you're looking for a simple to pick up and play sports game with a few friends, this would be a buy. Next up we have the interesting Close to the Sun, which from the initial eShop images and trailer look to potentially fill that void of Bioshock that we've had on the Nintendo Switch. You begin your story as Rose Archer, who boards the Helios in search of her sister Ada. When she realizes that might have been a grave mistake, everything begins to go slightly wrong. It's a first person horror adventure title with some puzzling thrown in for good measure. Now unfortunately, the performance here is a major issue on the Nintendo Switch. In fact, the current build is so bad at times, it's going into the single digits in terms of frame rate, and I actually can't play for an extended period of time because I feel quite nauseous. I've held off on mentioning the game at all for that reason, but it's been a few weeks now since launch, and having booted up the eShop again and loaded the game, it hasn't received a patch to fix these issues, and for my money, I'm afraid that's going to make it a solid solid avoid at this time. If it does change in the future and it gets patched up then I'll be sure to let you know, but right now for me it's borderline unplayable. <laughs> Next up then we have Street Outlaws The List which is based on a popular US TV show. It features many drag racing cars and allows you to customise and tweak those to quite a high degree. Unfortunately, the car handling is quite poor. Every car feels too heavy and the turning sluggish and you end up with the lower frame rates on the Switch version spinning out or just grimacing at the jaggedy edges on every surface. With games like Grid on the Nintendo Switch, any other racers coming along really need to prove that not only can they cut it graphically, but they also offer something more. Unfortunately for me, Street Outlaws The List most certainly does not. This one goes in the avoid category. Spaceland on the Nintendo Switch was another game that caught my eye instantly as a huge XCOM fan. Developer Tortuga Games take obvious inspiration from that title. It's a story-driven experience that essentially begins much like an alien movie, with you investigating some mysterious events upon a new planet. Unlike its inspiration, the battles are designed to be slightly shorter events, taking anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes. The aesthetic of the title is lovely. I think these visuals are brilliant 
brilliant. And not only do they stand out from a packed field, they're also very polished and slick on the Nintendo Switch. There are various different weapons that you can use in the game, and each different player has a certain skill set that will be essential for completing each stage. One minor gripe I had with the game was how easy it is to run out of ammo. Interestingly, and unlike the title I mentioned, this game features quite a few boss fights as well at the end of each chapter. There are some role-playing elements to it, but overall for my money, at around about $14 or £11, it's a good little pickup. Now, some of you might know this already, but I'm not exactly a horror game fan. However, Welcome to Hamwell caught my eye off the back of a few PC reviews that I read back in the day. My only real concern with the Nintendo Switch version was whether or not it was going to run okay. And I can tell you, it runs brilliantly. It takes an obvious slight visual downgrade, but to my eye, it's still running quite fluidly at 30 frames per second, and textures are all nice and crispy. There are similarities to the Silent Hill games in some ways, but also games like Outlast. You will be using melee weapons to fight off some of the monsters that roam the streets of Hanwell, and I think they've done a great job of squeezing quite a large open world into a 3 gigabyte file. I had to rope Glenn into to, uh, <coughs> play this one for the buy avoid list just because I was busy writing stuff about things and it was very useful watching him play from the other side of the room. He seemed to be having a very good time. The game is initially priced quite cheaply at around about $15 or £10 and I'd say for that money it's worth picking up. Next up then, we've got a slightly different title, and it's one from Nintendo. It's Ring Fit Adventure. Now, they've sent us a copy of this to play, and I had a little go on it today when it arrived, and it's absolutely great, I'm not going to lie. Many of these gimmicky type things that Nintendo do are fun for five minutes, and, well, they get a bit boring. But if you're serious about getting into shape, this is a beast of a workout. You can adjust it to your weight and size and shape. And the amount of intensity that you want to put in but forget all of that you can spend an hour to around an hour and a half running on the spot shooting things with this ring and fighting bosses and you don't even realize it because it's so much fun it feels like a fully fledged first party nintendo title and they've done a great job and watching my kids play this one as well has been brilliant the only stickler on this is going to be that price point it's about 65 pounds when all said and done which is nothing to be sniffed at Having played it for the last three or four hours, for me it would be a buy, but I know that's not going to be the case for everyone, so have a look at the images you're seeing on screen and a think about what you want out of it. The adventure begins when a wicked bodybuilding dragon named Drago throws the world into chaos. The world needs your help, and there's a lot of it to save. Ritual Crown of Horns is a top-down action arcade game where you'll be fighting off hordes of enemies often trying to defend someone at the center of the screen. There are a number of weapons and spells to use and a strange Wild West take on the visuals and audio. Initially, Glenn and I weren't impressed with the strange lock-on mechanic as we felt it slightly unnecessary in a twin-stick style shooter. However, he soon got into the gist of the game and began to quite enjoy it. Switching between your weapons allows the other to reload, so there's a touch of on-the-fly strategy. It's by no means an easy game, but it is quite an addictive one. I personally really enjoyed the visual style of this as well, with a vast colour palette that often contrasts against each other within a single level. The performance is quite solid and Despite a touch of clunkiness on that targeting mechanic, it works well enough. There's quite a lot of good competition within this space. For us, this would be a wait for a sale. The Eyes of Ara is a 
lovely little game. It's very much almost a spiritual successor to titles like Riven and Mist back on the PC. And contrary to those lovely looking visuals that had me believing they were still images, the entire game is actually 3D rendering. What I really enjoyed about playing through this one was not only were the puzzles quite logical and easy to gradually work your way through, but the Joy-Con has a motion control element whereby you can almost click around like a mouse and it works brilliantly. You'll be exploring a large castle full of secret areas and hidden rooms and as you try and solve where that mysterious signal is coming from that's been broadcasting from it, there are quite a few surprising twists and turns. The thing I really enjoyed though was just how accessible it was. After the brutally challenging Mist and Rival games that I think I pretty much quit playing this style, this was a breath of fresh air. It's around about $15 or probably about 12 quid. I would say this is a buy. Next up, we've got a game called The Big Journey, which is currently, I believe, around about 40% off on the eShop at only $3. Now, many looked at this and said, hey, that looks very familiar. And I'm sure most of us could guess what influenced this title. But I have to say, having played through around about 15 or 20 of these levels, it's great. It's very well made. Each of the six different worlds are very different in terms of their visual, and as you shift and tilt the entire world to allow your character to roll around, jump over puzzles, or flick switches, I couldn't help but be drawn in by the lovely soundtrack written by the Choconuts, whoever they are. At this price, yes, I know some of you might be like, well, they've just ripped off Loco Roco. But I've got to be honest, I think this is probably my bargain of the week. There's a reason it has a 92% positive rating on Steam, and that's that it's a very good, very well-made game. And let's be honest, you could probably pick it up for your spare gold coins on the eShop right now, and I think you should. This one's a buy. Next up is a game called Hexagroove Tactical DJ on the Nintendo Switch, and it's quite a tricky one to put into words. It's a rhythm game come DJ simulator, whereby as you progress through the game, and I use that in air quotes, you'll unlock over 400 unique instrumental loops. It's difficult to describe exactly how you play. You can see this circle in the middle of the screen, and you essentially just ensure that these stay blue. As they turn green, the crowd are starting to lose interest, and you shift over to a different rift, trying to maintain time. Every now and then, a small ball will enter the screen, and this acts as a metronome of sorts, with you tapping the B button in time with it, to keep it bouncing. After a short while, the screen will shift to an area where you can introduce new instrumental sounds and change the ones currently in play. If you've ever fancied feeling like a German DJ, well, now's your chance. It really does feel like you are performing before a crowd. It's quite strange, actually, and would work quite nicely if this was your type of music. There are different ones, techno, house, dance, hooking this up to your sound system at a party and just cranking it out. There's one to four player local multiplayer as well, and overall just a really interesting and unique title. It's rather expensive, it's around about $30, which in my opinion was a bit of a mistake, but having said that, there is so much that you could do with the game in terms of the amount of time you could spend with it, but it's still a touch too high. I would say wait for a sale. The last one for today then is the very well known Resident Evil 6, which is now out on the Nintendo Switch. Now just like Resident Evil 5, it's a decent port. It has motion controls and an easy drop in drop out multiplayer mode. Unfortunately the core game just isn't as good as 5 or 4, I think I could carry on to be honest. There are some strange and quite irritating mechanics in the game, and don't get me started on tripping over zombies. It's not that it's a bad title, and it does include all of the DLC, as well as the mercenaries mode and a six player competitive mode. It's just not that great 
a title. The gyro controls work well enough, and if you're keen to finish the series after playing through 5, certainly don't avoid the game, just wait and try and get it on sale. It did feel a little bit like they'd handed the reins over to Michael Bay, with things exploding in all directions and they cranked the quick time events up to 9. The melee combat is also much more prevalent here and just feels a touch overpowered. Yep, I'm definitely going to say wait for a sale on this one. Can't let your guard down for a second. How do you feel? I think I'm gonna be okay. Thank you. So that's it for today. Let us know down in the comments any of these that you'll be picking up. A big thanks to all the new subscribers. Consider doing so if you enjoy the content. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys. See ya.